been so damn good over the last year. So good, I could take you to Olive Garden. I haven't made a Tesla-based video in about 12 months, and guess what happened? Nothing. Remember you said, Richard, the channel is over if you decide to start doing gas cars. People came for the Tesla stuff. You're finished. Everyone's going to unsubscribe. Well, it turns out... It's false. No way. Not this time. It's fiction. It's a total fabrication. That was a total fabrication. So if you're new here, returning customer, have a seat, hit the subscribe button, and enjoy the show. We have a whole barrage of various vehicles that we find exciting. But please note, to really get up to speed, there's required watching. Watch the How Tesla Rewarded Me for Telling the Truth video, which was my last Tesla video, to see how my relationship with Tesla has been. Now, I stopped for a year and everything's fine now. The Elon fanboys will butter your biscuit if you have an opinion that they don't agree with. So back when I made those Tesla videos, I used to spend the first five minutes of every Tesla video defending everything I did in the last video, and it was exhausting. Now I don't have to do that anymore. It's actually kind of fun making videos again. So I bought an RS7 and I saw the single largest increase in subscribers the channel has come across since Joe Rogan the year prior. The crazy thing is that it almost seems that there's some people like the Tesla stuff, yes, but most watch because they find the channel kind of entertaining, which is why we did an experiment and made a video taking the million subscribers wife to Olive Garden and it did well, it did really well. People watched a totally non-correlated video on the channel in its entirety, and it actually did better than many of the Tesla videos before it. Now, late last year, we built an electric Mini Cooper for a few thousand dollars, start to finish, and showed everyone how to get parts for cheap. After that, we started Ice-T, the V8 Tesla, and a lot of fanboys were upset about the V8 Tesla because they thought I was trying to get back at Elon, and I was being juvenile. Well, let me tell you something. Elon Musk doesn't care about the V8 Tesla. I'm personally building it for me as an engineering exercise because it's fun to try different things that haven't been done before and as much of a waste of time and money as you think it is, Car and Driver, Motor Trend, Wired Magazine, and Popular Mechanics disagree with you. The switch was inevitable. All Teslas are so similar now, and after building an X and multiple S's, it's all the same thing. A lot of people say they miss when I used to do Tesla videos every week, day in and day out. Well, I'm sure you miss your old girlfriend too, but she's gone now. You can look at old pictures of her when your wife isn't around. If you stay with one thing, you flat out will not grow. If you don't mix the content, you'll stay the same size. I'll say it louder for those in the back that seem to think otherwise. We like Teslas, but we also straight up love badass vehicles. Don't forget the day I laid eyes on the Tesla for the first time. I loved it, but don't forget what car was in the background, the Z06. I gave the Tesla to my daughter, and what do I still have? The Z06. We love interesting cars no matter what it's powered by. That's it. We're pirates of propulsion. Maybe that's a new catchphrase. I don't really know. Now, today's video is more based around the shop and an interesting car that came to us. This person has a Model 3 that they got this year, brand new, ran over some debris in the road, and rendered their car useless. They brought it to Tesla, as any responsible owner would do, and got the shock of their life when his brand new car's bill was $16,000 for a battery replacement. As another option, he then came to the Electrified Garage to see what we could do. Now, the issue that occurred was a coolant tube that was hit and broke the connection to the pack, causing coolant to leak out, and unfortunately, they were unable to serve this part in the service center without a full battery replacement. So we took on the job, as we've seen this issue on another car before. The customer shipped this car to us from three states away because he had no other options. Actually, speaking of shipping options, I have to bring up ShipStation real quick. It's a really great service that I use to ship all my parts. It helps online sellers and small businesses like myself. If you don't know this, I'm the CEO of Uncle Rich's Pipe Lane Corporation. I get orders out quickly and I save money on shipping costs and you know I love saving money. With ShipStation, you ship with any carrier using a discounted rate, including USPS, FedEx, UPS, and even international. You can choose what the best shipping solution is every time. As a matter of fact, I never told anyone this before, but I have a store on Etsy that I make and I sell the Tesla fidget toys and I use ShipStation to surprise my customers. Remember the Tesla fidget toy? Will I make them and people actually buy them? I'm not sure what they use them for, but I sell them and ShipStation has them all in one interface so I can track sales. Whoa, I just sold one. I'm rich. So they even offer big discounts on shipping costs and now any business can access the same postage discounts that are usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies. Use my code RICHREBUILDS to get a 60-day free trial. Go to ShipStation.com and click at the link at the top of the page and type in 
Rich rebuilds. Make ship happen. That's a good pun, isn't it? Now, anyways, now at EG, we're no strangers to advanced Tesla repair. We literally have four former Tesla employees that work for the garage full time. And the first time we saw an issue similar to this one was the customer that came in with an older Tesla that was two months out of warranty. The car only charged for about 45 miles, and they brought it to Tesla and was quoted $20,000 for a new battery. Now, imagine that. The car is worth $25,000, but you need a new battery for $20,000? That doesn't sound very good, does it? A whole battery? So we took a closer look, found the individual bricks that needed a replacement, installed a new module, balanced it, and upgraded the pack fuse and contactors for 5000 And well, the customer got their range back and has been driving it since. Now, since the fanboys like to twist words, I'm not saying this is a very common issue yet, but when it does happen, it sucks. And I'm telling you, more cars are going to be coming out of warranty soon, so you'll be seeing a lot more of this. Remember three years ago when I had Phil tell everyone about the upcoming EMMC failures and you didn't believe us? Well, the NHTSA had to get involved and force Tesla's hand to replace them last year. Today's issue is a little bit different, but similar in some ways. It involves repair on a component level. So let's quickly talk to the customer before we show you how we repaired it. Okay, man, what is your name and what do you do? What brings you here today with us, man? I'm Donald Bone. Uh, cool last name, by the way. Very cool last name. <laughs> I'm an engineer for Radio City Musical in the city. The rundown is you went, you ran over some debris in the road. Yes, some... I thought I hit like a, a radiator or a line and no big deal. I was figuring about $800 or what, that's what I saw online. Right. And then Tesla called me up and said it was just a port. I'm like, oh, great, it's just a port. He's like, well, we have to replace the entire battery. For a port? That's insane. The labor, the super manifold, some other things, it came out to about $16,000. 16 grand. Since I switched my insurance over from one car to another, I never had the comprehensive coverage on the car and the insurance company didn't want to pay for it. So what about Tesla though? Isn't it, they require you to have a specific kind of insurance they on the car. Do, or they're supposed to put force placed insurance on. I contacted lawyers and that's more to protect them than it is to protect me. So it was, the onus was on me to have the car insured. Right. And I messed up there, but it's a lease car. There should have been insurance on it, or somebody should have caught it somewhere right. down the line. But I was when, just switching insurance from one car to another. But when you brought it in, they didn't, I guess it's not their job to check the insurance. They did but, check my insurance. Oh, they did? It's required to drive the car off the lot. I just, all they checked was that they were the, the, the beneficiary of ah, the, so the car was totaled out. They didn't care what but insurance it was. if the car was totaled out, they wouldn't have got any money anyway because it didn't have comprehensive coverage. All right, so that's a lesson to all. Make sure yes. you check your insurance coverage. It's not pointing fingers or blaming. It's an honest mistake. These things do it's happen. It's a mistake between me, the insurance company, Tesla, but yeah. it, it fell all on me. So. Right, yeah, at the, at the end of the day, you know, they were up 16 grand and, yes. you were, and you weren't. So I said, I don't have 16 grand. And then Who I, does? <laughs> I thought over all my options. It was a long day that day. And I, I was thinking about just leaving the car there and defaulting on it, but then I knew they would sue me. Yeah. And it's a lease car, so I just had a, a brick in my driveway. Actually, it was still a Tesla, and they let me drive it home with no cooling in it. I mean, did you have it towed there, or you drove no, it there? No, I drove it there. They said it was good to drive. And oh, boy. Uh, and that's, then, uh... Uh, yeah, so I was looking over all my options. I was looking online for options, and I couldn't find any garages anywhere near me or anybody that would even look at the car. So I guess to, to, to get more specific, so you drove it there, broken port, things aren't going so well. They were pointing fingers at the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. So you were kind of kind of stuck and like dead in the water. So why did they, did you ever kind of push them back and say, okay, well, why does it need a whole new battery replacement off of they this said one part? At that place, they couldn't open it up to replace the port. I looked at all other options. I, 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 I figured maybe I would try to do it. I had no idea. Yeah, whoa well, now, hey, 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 slow down now. <laughs> hey, so now. my last thing was I was going to get a loan for the, to, get the $16,000 out of the bank the next morning. So I was sitting on a bus, joined a bunch of different Tesla clubs to share my story and my experience. Mm -hmm. Not trying to bash Tesla or anything. I love no, the No, cars. no, no, we're not, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, we're, we're not to do that, yeah. But I was just sharing my experience, not trying to put them on blast. And then uh, somebody mentioned this garage that might be able to fix it. I called these guys up and they said they've seen it before and they yeah. can absolutely service it. Mm -hmm. So it's almost, tenth of the price with the travel and everything. Right. It's just, there needs to be more garages like this if 
electric cars are gonna take off. You can't have somebody drive six hours to fix their car. You wanna push the cars and say, hey guys, buy this, buy this, buy yeah, this. But it's like, I mean, just kidding, you have to drive six hours out of state if you want another choice for it. And there's only two Teslas, two or three Tesla places in New Jersey. And mm -hmm. for them to fix it, it would have taken three weeks just to order the parts, take the battery out, put the new battery back in. And right. I, it's my only car. It's a total out of car for a port. Mm -hmm. Even if I pay the insurance and they switch the battery for $15,000, the insurance companies have got to eventually catch on and say, hey, we're not gonna replace a car for a port. That seems incredible. So here's my question. Why didn't you try doing it this way? Why didn't you try having them replace it and then buying the battery, I mean, yes. getting the core well, back and selling thing. that. So as I was on the bus waiting for replies and a little bit of advice from the Tesla car club, I saw on eBay, if I could buy a battery, I'd like, maybe I could just buy a battery and put it in my garage. <laughs> and then I saw they sell the cells for right. about 800 bucks each for, uh, I think it's the model S. Yeah. And the model three is long shells. And yeah. they sell for about three grand each. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, that's 12 grand. That kind of pays for the new battery. Right. I call up Tesla and say, well, there's no core charge on it. And if I pay 15 grand, I want the battery. They're like, you can't do that. Well, New Jersey, you can, right? New you Jersey get... is, is, it's a law. If there's no core charge, you get to keep your old parts. Right. So I told them that and they're like, well, hold on a second. And then they started thinking about it. And then they're like, well, you're gonna need a certified Tesla engineer or whatever tech they call them to discharge the battery because it's too dangerous for transport. You need to use our transport. Right. I don't know why you would want the battery. And I was like, ah, it's none of your business why I want the battery. Right. Right. Why, why do you, they asked you that same question why, years ago. Why do I want why the battery? Because yeah. I paid why do you rain want, for it. <laughs> That's why I want the battery. I'll hang it on my wall if I Why do you I want to. this? It's, yeah, it's, the battery's totally unsafe. When it's in the car, it's fine. You could drive with I no coolant. I drove it there with no coolant. Yeah, that's fine. It's unsafe for me to take it on a flatbed home. No, it's, you can't have it on a separate container. Yeah. <laughs> so as far as Tesla's tech team goes, it's just, it's very disappointing that they're not more open with smaller garages. Again, be, not bashing them, not, we're just no, saying that, you know. The car itself is amazing for what it could do, for the price that they're coming down to. Right, you can't an beat amazing, it. amazing, car. But you need to be able to service them. You can't go to the one Tesla dealer if you want to revolutionize and have electric cars on the road, you can't have one dealer to go to for each state. Or right. Two dealers to go to each state. That's just not gonna. Or even fix yourself. People right. like to wrench on cars. I see your. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There. A little fill thing over people there. Like yeah, to, yeah. People like to wrench on cars, so it's it's really disappointing that they don't have aftermarket support, or at least small business garage support. Right, and that's the biggest thing when it comes to, you know, again, right to repair stuff. This right is this is it's ultra big. mega super important because- and it's not just Tesla, Ford fought against it, GM fights, yep. all the big three fights against- They don't want you to do locking it. Locking their technology in their car. And I understand right. it, but you gotta be able to at least bring it to a garage and be able to fix your car. I, think I would have had to sell my race car. I would have had to- to pay back the loan, that, that was about three fifty a month for mm -hmm. three years. So that's the price of the car payment on top of the I, price of the loan payment. I would grind, if I would have done that, I would have been, I, every time I got by the wheel of this car, I would have been grinding my teeth yes. constantly, knowing I the fact that my payment- I told my wife it's just a dummy tax we have to pay each month because we, we messed up yeah. with the insurance, but- it was the only option. But no, but three, like, but three fifty for that many years. That's a car payment. That's a literal car payment on my, top of that. My car payment's three eighty, so it would have been three eighty plus the three fifty a month for the, uh, you know, until I sold my other stuff and uh, paid so, it off. So you'd be paying seven something a month. So yeah, that sixteen that's... grand would have been sixteen grand plus five percent interest over three years. So I've been close to twenty thousand dollars in the hole for a car I have to give back too. So because it's a lease, right? And you good can't point. even keep the car. Very good point. What do we got here, Chad? So what we have here is a uh, brand new car that had an unfortunate mishap. Um, since it's a two-wheel drive, there's no drive unit here. And Look at that big hole there. Yeah. So this is, can happen on a two-wheel drive. It, can also, it happens on all-wheel drives. We've seen it happen before. But this one was a lot worse because there's nothing there to take the impact. He ran over something and it punched through the belly pan. And what it did was it hit this, this plastic bullet tube right here and it smacked the battery nipple and it cracked the nipple right here. You can see it cracked the bottom half of that nipple. Yeah. Problem is Tesla says the only way to fix this is to replace the battery. 
Really? At sixteen thousand dollars. No, that's cheap, right? Yeah. So they're like, yeah, it's junk. You can't fix it. You need a, you need a battery. I say otherwise. This cooling system is very low pressure. Maybe mm -hmm. one psi, two psi at the most ever. These can't really take high pressure to begin with. So one of our um, friends had this happen to his, and they actually told the car on him. <laughs> Another friend bought, bought it and we fixed it, and, and they still drive it around just that today with it. What we did is we took the cut the nipple at the brake. So this nipple broke a little differently. This one broke right here where the locking ring is. Yep. So it's a little bit more complicated. The other one snapped off a little further back, so we had a little more more meat to play with. But what we did is we cut it off, and then we threaded the battery pack half and then threaded this half with a pipe thread, and then used a pipe thread sealant and then threaded it back together again. Very and clever. Put it back on, and it works great. So I mean, it is gonna... just plumbing after all. Exactly. That's what we're going to do here. Sweet. Also, don't mind the noise. The uh, super manifold's a little pissed off right now because yeah, there's yeah. not a lot of coolant. So let's try as minimally invasive procedure as possible to try to cut this off. I'm just going to start with a utility knife, and this may take a minute. I mean, if you look down in it, you can see <laughs> the blade just goes right in. <laughs> it's so close now. There it is. Okay, so we're going to clean that up, smooth it out, and do the same to the nipple. What do we got? So here's the nipple that we cut off, and we filed it smooth on the, on the back side. And the reason for that is because we're going to use a pipe thread tap. What I do is I cut the threads in this. And this here is the nipple that okay. I cut off of here. Correct. So what I did was I used a rubber strap wrench on this, and then I tapped out the threads in here. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to take a nipple, brass nipple, and use a sealant on, on the threads, of course. But we're going to thread that in to the nipple, and we're going to tap this, and then we're going to thread this back into the battery. Well, it's almost like it was like that way to begin with. Right. Like I said, it doesn't take a, it's not a lot of pressure in the system, so the thread and the seal is, is fine. Uh, I've used brass and cool and this coolant before it, it has no reactions with it, so we're safe to use that. Perfect. Took that off, we filed it smooth. And we're gonna start by hand, and you want to try to get it straight as possible. I'll do it up totally by hand just to make sure. Because it's it is plastic, so it, Starts real easy. It's really easy to damage too if you're not careful. Yeah, if that tap slips at all, you can mess up your starter threads and then you're in trouble. Right. And you don't want to go in at an angle because you start at a slight angle here. By the time you get back far enough, you're already in danger. You're in trouble. You're at a 45 by then. Yeah. The uh, it's going in kind of at an angle and it doesn't follow the hole. Yeah. And if you do it really wrong, you can actually cut through the wall. Correct. So I'm using a short, a short one. I'm not using a long tap, just in case. And once we're done doing this, we have to flush out the pipe and get the plastic chips out. So we have just a uh, little turkey baster, so to speak, and some water. And we'll just flush it out. So what we want to do is take some water. Um, and the way this coolant port works, it goes in and curves up. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some water and just shoot, shoot it in and let it flow out to get all the chips out. That's perfect. I should get your phone right in that stream, right? Yes. <laughs> Dry fit. We're not going to put any seal on it just yet. Just make sure this works. I got a hex nut on this, on this double end fitting here. And the reason for that is I don't want to use this piece to thread this whole brass piece in to the battery. I want individual control of how much I tighten it on each side so I don't crack this. So using mm -hmm. one with a hex is great, but you can get a, a, uh, a nipple like this and thread it in and make it even closer if you really want to. I don't like that because I don't want to tighten this too much and crack it. We got our thread sealant on here. You don't want to tighten this too tight, so just... And just wipe off the excess. I'm going to do the same thing to the, uh, the nipple piece that's going to be threaded on there, and we're good to go. So here's how it looks when it's finished. Looks pretty good. All I have to do is reconnect coolant hoses on both sides here. 
fill the system, bleed it, and we're good to go. Like you've done it before maybe a lot of people in the comment section which they always do they're gonna say well what if tesla finds out are you concerned with tesla watching this video and saying aha we got him we're gonna cancel his warranty because we told him to spend 16 grand with us and not get it done for less money elsewhere like well, are you like do you have any no, concerns with that not really because i still love the car and i'm still gonna push it to everybody it's just that maybe it was just that one specific tesla dealer i don't i don't know it's yeah. just but i've told the truth it's just my experience, maybe other people had better experience with Tesla customer service. The uh, the FM module in the RS7 died. Oh, That's why it never worked. Womp womp. So you know where I took it? To the dealership. <sighs> no. Ready for this? $1,600 they wanted for Ooh. it. But you know what they did? Do you know what they did, Chad? What did they do? I said, that's a lot of money. They said, we know it's a lot of money. They said, they gave me the part number for the FM module. They said, you can get it wherever you get it online. If you bring back that FM module, we will code it to the car for you. Wow. Come Whoa. on, guys. Nice. Whoa. So Holy I'll shit. tell you, so what they did, they're, they're still making money on labor, yep. right? And they have good customer service, and now everyone's happy. How about that? How, what a, what How an idea. About that? What How an about idea, idea huh? You gotta have a dealership just to do this car. There's gonna be no more mechanics anymore, because. Each guy's gonna have its own proprietary software where you can't touch them. It's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's gonna get pretty ugly. And the I can't. I, that's that blows my mind, man. I, I keep reiterating that that it's so crazy that, like, what would we do? Like, we're we're, we're regular people. That's sixteen grand. <laughs> that's yeah, sixteen grand is a lot of money. That's sixteen grand, and it's not even our first rodeo. Remember, you know, <laughs> the, it's this is this is the next car. But either way, I'm we glad you came, man. Enjoy the car in good health. I'm glad we were here to help you. I hope that. You know, you have many more successful you miles. A lot. With the, keep my race car. With the car. Yeah, <laughs> I love the race car. That's see? the important thing, right? That's the important it's thing, the important keeping the race car, man. Dad. That's awesome, awesome, dude. Congratulations. Thank Good you. stuff. For many miles before that, I was driving it with the normal belly pan. Right. And all it took was just a little piece of debris on the road to come and take out and basically, you know. It deactivated the car. It deactivated the car. not come to anything at all. Yeah. yeah. And then, again, it's not some, it's not a pandemic where it's like, whoa, everyone needs to get this now. This is a crazy fall because people like to spread that information and just kind of, what's it called? FUD? Whatever it is, whatever it's called. <laughs> whatever, 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 whatever the cool kids use on Twitter. And um, it's, it's not that, it's just that these are things that happen and it's just, we want to drive the importance of having, you know, third party repair because people like Pete, when these things happen, 16, I don't know about you, but $16,000 is a lot of money. That's a lot of money for a battery. So that's what we want to focus on. That third party repair is key. Right to repair is key. That's what we want to push for people to do these things. Because if it was only up to one manufacturer, if they had their way, that look at you. They have to flex on us like that. <laughs> no way, you can see that. I mean, nothing has changed inside. Yeah. Right. It looks really clean. It's relative. Yeah, it's, it's cleanish. It's cleanish. You didn't put your front back in. Hey, lazy? I, I just, I just, yeah, I just I'm do that for of this. <laughs> yeah, It's been nearly 30,000 miles and yeah. still driving like this. Yeah, yeah, no, which 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 is really amazing. So that's that's what we're just trying to promote. Like, you know, we need the tools, right to do our own thing or else, unfortunately, in a lot of cases, people could be out a lot. There needs to be another option. Well, the problem is that Tesla doesn't do individual part replacement. They do assembly replacement. Right, exactly. So there's nothing to, like, if it's just one little piece and it's part of a whole assembly. Some, like a battery pack. A battery pack, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's a one whole piece. They won't do individual pieces. And that's very frustrating mm -hmm. because it's like, it's an easy fix, but they won't do it because it's like, well, we can only do a whole assembly and that's it. Right. That's the only way there is to do it. And but it's it, like, no, there is, there's an alternative. But it's there's also training too. Again, not, not saying anything bad, but like, a lot of the times Tesla wants to be as cost effective as possible. Yep. And, you know, why would you want to train a long standing, long term technician all this money to have the knowledge to actually dissect the battery pack yep. when you could just have a technician? Yes. So that's that's the other problem too, is rebuilding right. remaining battery packs. They um, they don't do them in the service center. They used to have some service centers that were certified to do that. Right. Uh, contact rebuilding and actually starting to do brick replacement. And it took a lot to get people trained and then have an area dedicated for it and all that stuff. And they ended up finding out that it wasn't cost effective. It's easier to take it to the 
the remanding area where they have like a, a set up area that just that's all they do all day long. Guys are already trained in it all day long. They rip them apart. They have this, uh, shelves full of parts and pieces, you know, because they're right there in in the place where they make them. So they can just get a new tube and put it in and be done with it. Right. And then they can test them after the fact with a test rig. So that's the other reason. So they can actually pressure track and all that stuff. Where in the service center you don't have all the tooling for that. Right. right. And, so. and people would say, oh my gosh, like, you know, that's, you should just replace the whole battery. Yeah. The proof's in the pudding. Yeah. You don't, this is, this is 30,000 no, miles. So here's the, here's the crazy part. Right. Everybody thinks of a cooling system as like a, an ice engine. Okay. You're talking 16, 20 PSI of pressure. High pressure, high 200 heat. 200 plus degrees of temperature on a daily right. basis. This does, you know, this will never see that. It's a low pressure it, system. It can't even have more than uh, two PSI in it. Otherwise it starts breaking the coolant tubes in the battery. Exactly. So it's very, very low pressure. And then temperature, you're lucky if that thing even gets 100 degrees. Right. right? I mean, it's probably on a bad day, but everything heated up, you know, if you're lucky, it might even hit that. If, if it's 100 degrees out, then your coolant might be 100, yeah, put it that way. But it's, <laughs> it's not like it, it, you're getting that hot because there's no need to get that hot. And if you're getting that hot, there's a problem. Right. Yeah. And the car is shutting down anyways. It's saving the battery, it's saving the driver, it's just gonna start powering down everything. So there's no temperatures that high. So you, it doesn't take very much to fix the plastic nipple. Right. Your Especially kitchen, when you're fixing it with- Your kitchen faucet has more PSI. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're fixing it with actual metal parts. Yeah. It's not like it's- Right. It's actually probably going to be stronger this way, right. you know. So but again, it's, it's not a temporary. It's not a temporary thing. It's a it's thirty thousand. It's a thirty thousand. It's a permanent mile. fix. Yeah. yeah. So this is. I drive this like a normal person would drive it. This is a leak stop. Is it leak? Yeah. It's not stop leak. We're not. Yeah. We don't. Know, like we don't come out. We yeah. condone that yeah. at all. Yeah, we don't do that at all. But yeah, this is going to just just mostly like an awareness thing that people know. Yeah. This is what. This is what we're seeing. This is what's happening. This and unfortunately. This is also taking cars down. The cars are getting totaled over this. There are right. high mods. If you're 50,000 miles and that happens, that car is totaled. Yep. They won't spend or, or better yet, if you have a, a rear wheel drive single motor Model 3 mm -hmm. for a 16,000 mile repair, the car is 35. In a lot of cases, a lot of different insurance companies will say, hey, listen, you know, this is almost 50% of the entire cost, cost of the, the vehicle. Yep. Oh, wait, you know, they increased the price. It's now up to like 39. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. No, seriously. Yeah. So that, that's that's the funny yeah. thing. It's like it gets really interesting to see how various insurance companies interpret uh, what designates a totaled car. Yeah. Some places yeah. are like half, some places are seventy percent, whatever yeah. percent. So you could have the wrong insurance company, and they could say to themselves, "All right, well, let's see. The you paid thirty five for the car. This battery is almost half of the value of the car. It's Stop. not worth it. You're kind of SOL. Right. Yeah. So we're also thinking too is that." When it comes to the customer, like 16 grand, I, I don't have 16 grand to say, hey, look, here's my new battery for my car. Yeah. So you go through insurance, a lot of times your premiums go up, insurance might even cover it and say you have to go somewhere else. Yep. And then sometimes they give you the, almost like the, the used value of the car. They say, okay, I know you paid 35 for it. That's fantastic. We're gonna take this car from you, but because you've been driving it for like four years now, here's a check for 20 grand. Yep. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. Well, I can't buy another Tesla with that. Right. So I'm stuck to driving, you know, something whatever. Yeah, yeah, something that's 20 grand. Yeah. Leaf. Yeah. Nissan Leaf. All right, I'm not gonna say anything bad about the Nissan Leaf. The Nissan Leaf is a great car. But just in case this video didn't completely scare you away from owning a Tesla, there's a chance to win one. The Chicago Hesed Fund, again, if you miss it the first time, it's annual raffles about to take place and get your tickets, they're selling out fast, and these tickets are capped. You can get yourself on the site and win a Tesla S, X3, or Y, or 50 grand cash. Use promo code RICHREBUILDS in the description box below to get two tickets for a discounted rate to help your chances and to help a good cause. The CCF has over 40 programs to help the Chicagoland area people in need, which feels good, so make sure you check them out. There's a link in the description box below. And if you win this car, Bring it to Electrified Garage, and I will personally sign it and make the car lose $10,000 in value. So make sure you check that out. But this video, he actually learned a hard lesson when it comes to insurance and dealing with Tesla in some cases. I hope you learned something today. And if you're in a similar situation or have any questions and don't know what to do, give us a call to the Electrified Garage, and let's see what we can do for you. I will see you all next week.